Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. This is one of a series of videos expanding on the Success Story Shares initiative started in South Africa by Linky van der Merwe of Virtual Project Consulting and Louise Worsley of Pi Cubed, and which has their enthusiastic support, as you'll see in a minute. Aldous Huxley said that men do not learn very much from the lessons of history is the most important of all the lessons of history. Project management research has shown that project managers prefer to learn by face-to-face -face interaction rather than searching through lessons learned databases. I think that project managers can learn a lot from each other's success stories and even more from sharing their scars. So, as part of my campaign for real project managers, on your behalf, I'm talking to some real project managers I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can benefit from their experience. Today, I'm delighted to have with me Louise Worsley, who's going to share some of her experiences with us. Louise is the person who uh, planted this idea in my head with that success story shared initiative in, from South Africa. So Louise, I'd like you to start, if you could, by giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. Louise Worsley, I am a consultant in project management and have been for about 15 years. Um, I, um, I, I also am a lecturer in project management at the University of Cape Town and I think I probably was in project management and IT management for about 15 years and I've been a consultant for about 12-15 years, so about, about the same time mm -hmm. as those two types of things. Today my main involvement in projects is in a coaching role, so I do consultancy often working with project office managers and I will do things like health checks and audits and governance reviews on different, many, many different types of projects. So thinking back over your project management experience then when you were directly involved in, in managing pro projects, um, can you give us an example of a scar, so something that went badly and painfully wrong um, and what you learned from it? The one I'm going to talk about is a company called BTEC. They used to do all the H&Ds and qualifications in the UK and I was head of IT there so I would also be responsible for running the major projects. But for this particular project it was a fees billing project and, and BTEC um, had to change the way they would bill their customers and by customers for them that would be the colleges. And there are a number of things that were different about it. First of all it was extremely strategic. So BTEC was a charitable organisation um, it meant that it had to understand its financial position right from the beginning of the year and it would spend, it didn't borrow, it spent what it actually earned. Now the problem with the existing systems was it often didn't know what it was going to earn until maybe halfway through the year. Right. So it would get to the end of the year and it would either underspend or wouldn't know how to spend its money. So this was going to be a major change in the way that the business could run itself. And secondly, we, we knew where we wanted to be, we knew exactly where we wanted to be, what the end result would be, but we didn't know how to do it. And that was a very different experience for me, and it wasn't something you could analyse out. And what was interesting about this project is for the first time as a project manager, I really had to step back and my real job was to facilitate members of the business to come together to be able to explore ideas about how on earth we could achieve the outcome, which was BTEC knowing about its income within a month of the year beginning. Right. I think the other challenge was that in, in an organisation like BTEC, like an a educational examination body, there's some, some very strong stakeholder groups, there's some very strong power groups. And in those organisations, the normal one would be the student administration department. They get the money in because they own all the students type of thing. But here was this big problem, it was about financing. BTEC brought in a new um, head of finance, a new accounts director. So I had my normal stakeholder and I had a new guy in and some or other, they needed to work together. And, and that wasn't going to be easy. Mm -hmm. For the first time, I really had to start the project by creating the space through which these stakeholders, in particular these two, could engage, could seek out different solutions, um, and could come to an agreement. In, when, in some ways, student administration would be a bit like naysayers. Everything that we would be come up with, there would be a good reason why not to do it. Um, and somehow I needed to not rush those early stages of the project. I needed to allow them to dwell in that to the point where they came to a solution which they had agreed on. Actually, the solution in the end, which came from the new accountant, was a process called um, self-billing. Uh, scary, because for the first time what you were going to do is allow the colleges to tell you what they thought that they should pay you. And of course the worry from student admin is, oh, but it might be wrong. But what the accountant had to do is persuade us and make us understand that as long as it was within 10%, who cares? <laughs> and that was a very different model. In the, in the past, um, the student admin, it was down to the last student, and now it was, well, it's about right. 
and about right is okay. It turns out about right is okay for this right. solution. So looking back on it, it worked. And the most important thing was that it was the business's solution. It probably wasn't technologically by the best solution, but it was the one they had chosen and it worked. For the first time, um, BTEC was in a position that it could start to see much, much earlier in the year what its likely income was going to be. So there were quite a few learning lessons from that, and I'll, I'll perhaps pick up on some of those. So we were getting our invoices, our, our payments in from the colleges, but because we hadn't really reviewed the outer, outskirts of the new system processes, um, the process that the accounts department were using to put the money in the bank, they were still leaving it in their in-trace. <laughs> so one, the, one of the things that happened was that although we started to see our income earlier, we, we were forgotten to say, oh, by the way, you need to bank the checks every day rather than every two weeks. Right. So, so there were things like that that came out of it. Uh, I think I learned a lot about how part of the role of the project manager is creating the right space and the right structures to allow the business to engage. So I think it's interesting as a project manager how we, uh, how we engage those naysayers. Sometimes their um, expertise can be used in a very positive way. And I think that's what I was trying, what we had to do there. And I guess the third point was the one I, I finished on at the end, and that is who, who owns the, the, the business case memory? Who owns the benefits memory is quite interesting. The person who comes along and says, do you remember why we were doing it? Are we sure we've ticked all the boxes here? So that business case memory um, is something I now, I think I keep in my head. It's, I don't think it's a project manager's role, but we can certainly prompt that going back and re-examining to say, have we remembered? Have we remembered what we're here for? And I think that was a very important part of that project. Yeah, that's a good one. I've worked in projects where we've um, printed out the key points of the business case and stuck them on the wall so that everyone can uh, see them. And it's a really good way of uh, keeping in touch with them. Yes. OK, mm. thanks for that. So that's an example of a, a scar, so something that went wrong. Um, can you uh, tell us about something that you um, habitually do on projects that, that helps them to go well, so a success story? The clarity at the front end of a project is pretty fundamental and can have a major impact upon the success of a project. One of the techniques and the approaches that I have always used is to take multiple perspectives. So rather than just say, tell me what your objective is, what are the success factors? What's important to you? And then I, I can help them in bringing back together what a coherent plan might look like. Because I see my job is ensuring that whatever we do remains connected to their outcome. And uh, and one of the ways of understanding their outcome is allow them to express it in multiple ways. And if there are inconsistencies in that, inconsistencies in that, my job is to raise those and say, okay, I understand you like this and you like this, but this doesn't quite work. How would you like to resolve that? I mean, if you were to take the project we were talking about from, from, from BTEC, in the early stages, that project would probably have been expressed as we need a way of um, getting the money in faster. Uh, and it was only through the exploring of what the different stakeholders were saying, including the CEO, by the way, that it wasn't just those two departments, that we were able to uncover a different problem, which was we didn't necessarily want the money faster, we just wanted to know what the money position was going to be, and that's a different problem. And I think if we hadn't unearthed that, we would have created the wrong solution. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about getting the money in faster, to a certain extent. It was knowing what our revenue position was going to be earlier turned out to be more important. So what would you recommend to other people that they should do as a result of your experience? We've got this constant dilemma between taking, between getting the clarity at the front end um, and not taking too long over planning. So project managers are constantly put under pressure to just go over the planning, get on and do it. And you know what, some of the projects that's okay for. But there are other types of projects where you have to bring, for example, together multiple stakeholders where the, um, their agreement is more important than rushing into something, where we don't understand the solution. Remember in VTEC's case, we didn't know what the solution was. <laughs> we had no idea. In those cases, then the project manager's got to be tough on ensuring that front-end stuff is being done. Louise, thanks very much for that. So we've heard today from Louise about something that went wrong on a project and how she recovered from it, and about something that she does often for, to help projects go well. 
Anton Chekhov said, knowledge is of no value unless you put it into practice. I believe the value of learning comes not from documenting the past, but from changing what we do in the future. So my challenge to you is what will you learn from this? What will you do differently as a result of hearing about it, Louise's experience? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video informing and stimulating, please leave a comment or a like or both or share it with others on social media. If people think these videos are, visual, are useful and interesting, let me know and I'll make more of them. If you want to appear in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website, pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell, Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for watching.